I greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. What a privilege to just enter into His presence again, sitting around the mighty Word of God, the Word that is alive. So let us pray. And, and today's title will be Obedience. Father, thank you. Thank you that we can come before you. And may I say, I believe and I hope it is really in obedience that we will listen to what you say to us today and that we will be found doing what you told us. I honor you and I praise you and I worship you in the wonderful name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, this is saying it is not who taught you, but who sent you. Have you ever heard this? Listen to this. It is not who taught you, but who sent you. We read in the Bible, uh, there in, in, in Acts 5, where Paul where the Bible teaches us about Gamaliel. Gamaliel was a Pharisee, he was a doctor of the Jewish or biblical law, so he was a very, very learned man. And we know that, that, that the Bible speaks highly of him there, and we see in his action in that specific portion that he's a wise man. But then we say, see in, in Acts 22, where Paul testifies, and, and he tells, he says, but I... I was a student of Gamaliel. So, so part of his testimony, part of his um, CV was that he was a student or a learner under Gamaliel. Something supposedly to be good. But now we see everything, uh, if we read on, everything that happened under Gamaliel wasn't, wasn't positive at all. Because uh, Paul was in, uh, inspired or set ablaze with a type of fire that had him do a zeal, that had him do such a lot of things against God. And the Bible is very clear that when we go against God, Paul, they told God, it's hard, it's hard to go against God. And Afrikaans praat ons van, dat is hard om in die prikkels te skop. So this was the Paul who was taught by Gamaliel. But then we see there was a Damascus Road experience where God just intervened, where he called Paul to a standstill, and where he says, Paul, this is very hard. It's hard to go against God. And we see that now Paul wasn't taught anymore, but Paul was now called and sent by God. It is not who taught you, but who sent you. That makes the difference. So all of a sudden, Paul can now walk into his destiny in that which God created him for. Not because of where he was taught, but because of who he sent him. And thank God, thank God the things that happened in our lives, in our past, God used that to our advantage. Thank God for that. So uh, we need to understand this. This is also clear in, 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 or, or, yeah, uh, to be seen in the daily life of spies. Just go to the two spies known in South Africa very well. Both spies served in our military. They were trained by our defense force. Yet the one spy chose to serve the South African defense force, Craig Matthews. But then there was another spy. He was a commodore in the Navy, Dieter Garrard. He chose to serve. Although they taught him this side, he chose to serve Russia. So, so we need to know this. There is something very definite about what we have learned, who taught us, and most importantly, who is sending us. Because when we serve someone, we are supposed to be obedient. Listen to Jesus. I want you to take to the very, very uh, well-known prayer that Jesus taught his disciples on their request. Lord, please teach us how to pray. And then he starts with this. Our Father who art in heaven. It is like saying our Father, God of Genesis 1 verse 1. There's no confusion here. There's no generic titles. It's not just a God. It is the God. Not a God that fits all sizes and all doctrines. No middle way. There is only the one God that can be called by this name. If I serve in today's army, I need to use the tactics and the weapons of my army. 
I need to listen to the command of my leaders. I cannot ask uh, when sent out on a, on a different a difficult task or an operation, I, I, I can't ask them, I now want an old muzzle loader because I am used to using old muzzle loaders. I can't ask for a stick of dynamite. No, I cannot ask to fly a Harvard when everybody is flying uh, Grippens or F-16s. Now I need to use that which they issue me with. I need to follow their commands. I don't, uh, uh, and I'm not allowed to, to, to follow my own head and to do my own thing. Let me go back to the scripture. I have started with this. I have started with this. If I serve, if I serve, who do I serve? This is our problem. We are enlisted soldiers, but we want to call the shots won't work. Our late friend Bruce Pringles, uh, uh, Pringle loved to use the quote, if you want to run with the big boy, uh, uh, the big dogs, don't cry like a poodle. You need to do what is required of you. John 8 verse 34, Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. If the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Did you notice that Jesus is speaking of the one whom you serve? You cannot say that you are serving God, that you were sent by him, but you are doing your own thing in your own way. This is why we have a, cho a choice who we want to serve. And we read the well, very well-known verse, Joshua 24, verse 15. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He comes and Joshua tells him very clearly, you must choose. But I want to tell you, I've made my choice. I choose to serve this our Father, which is in heaven. This is the one that I'm going to serve. Remember, and only remember that you will have to serve and, and, and be obedient to the God that you have chosen. If you choose wrong, if you choose foolishly, you will suffer under that God you've chosen. You will have to lay down your plans, your tactics, your strategies. Look at how Joshua fulfilled this. This very Joshua that just said, uh, I want to tell you, I know who I am going to serve. You must choose who you want to serve, but I've chosen to serve the Lord. Come and, and, and let's be serious. We must understand that Joshua was trained, uh, and, and we read a lot of times of, of, of his military feats. He's a warrior, and he's taught uh, to be a good warrior. God has told him. God has instructed him. God has allowed him to become that warrior. And now they come and they arrive in front of a town, a massive city called Jericho. And the strategist and the military man that he is, he immediately starts with his plans and he says, well, if we do this, if we do that, because he's a military man. But because he's a child of God, he serves God. He's not just a child of God uh, because he attends church on a Sunday or on a Sabbath day. He's a child of God because of his obedience. So he takes all his plans and says, God, this is what I think we should do with Jericho. But what do you say? And, and if we look at this, it seems like the most foolish thing. Because God says to him, and this is just paraphrasing it in a modern day term now, put away your assault rifles. Put away your spears and your swords. Put away your artillery. Put away, park your tanks. And we don't see for one moment, he must have had a struggle inside of himself, of course. Because he's a warrior, because he's a military man. But he doesn't tell God, God, this is foolish. Because he serves God. And he knows as a good serv a servant and as a good soldier, uh, one of the things that a soldier learns very uh, quickly is to obey a command. 
So he knows I've got to obey my commander in chief because he's got access to information that I do not have. And when God comes to him and says, I want you to put away all your weapons. It is now a case of not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. So he comes and he says, I want you to go and take your worship team. My wife just spoke to me and she says, can you think, she didn't even know that what I was going to talk about. She says, do, do you know, can you think the, 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 the Israelites, they were a lot of murmuring, moaning people, complaining about everything. And now God tells them to shut up. And for six days, they have to shut up. And, 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 and I had to laugh. She, 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 she said the example. She says, can you think by the second day, they must have walked like this, angry, but just to show that, that, that they, they don't like this. But at least they obeyed. They kept quiet. And then on the seventh day, you let your people play the musical instruments and start to sing. And I think every person with a soldier heart must have thought, Lord, I hope this is going to work. I can't see how this can work. I just hope it will work. But you must always understand it was a relationship thing. Joshua can do it. He could do it because of his relationship with God. Let me refresh your memory if you don't remember. Joshua 1 verse 5. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. So that means whether it was the city of Jericho, whether it was an army, whatever and whoever it was, trust God. And because of that relationship, and that doesn't mean for one single moment that Joshua now had caught Blanche to do what he wanted to do in the way that he wanted to do. No. No, there were certain requirements. Let us read further. Joshua 1 verse 7. Only you be strong and very courageous that you may do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may observe and do according to all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall deal wisely and have good success. So he, he had his instructions. I will be with you all the days. Nobody will be able to stand uh, against you. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. But you've got to keep my commandments. You've got to stick to the word. To my battle plan. To my strategy. To my game plan. Whatever you want to call it. But you've got to stick to this. And that is why he could walk. For six days. Without a word. That's why he could uh, leave his uh, weapons aside. And put his worship people in front. Because God said so. That finishes it. And lastly, I want to draw your attention to Jesus Christ. The Son of God. Who, who really practices what he preaches. When he, when, he, when he showed us and listened to his words. Joshua, uh, John 8, pardon me, verse 28. So Jesus added, When you have lifted up the Son of Man on the cross, you will realize, know and understand that I am He for whom you look, and that I do nothing of myself, of my own accord, or on my own authority, but I say exactly what my Father has taught me. And He who sent me is ever with me. My Father has not left me alone, for I always do what pleases Him. The bottom line is simply, who has called you and who has sent you? Did you accept the call? Are you living in obedience to the one who called you? Are you willing to surrender your own will and your own plans? Proverbs 3 verse 5. Lean on, trust in and be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind. 
and do not rely on your own insight and or understanding. In all your ways, know, recognize and acknowledge Him and He will direct and make straight and plain your paths. Psalms 37 verse 4 Delight yourself also in the Lord and He will give you the desires and secret petitions of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Roll and repose each care of your load on Him. Trust, lean on, rely on and be confident also in Him. And He will bring it to pass. Who will bring it to pass? He, the one whom you serve. Our God, our Savior. Our God through His Holy Spirit will give you wisdom, will give you authority. He will do things that you couldn't even imagine can be done. Are you ready to serve? I'm going to pray and then I'm going to play out with a song, a kid's song, a Sunday school song. And if you haven't heard it before, I want you to look. The lyrics will be on the screen. Look at that lyrics. Look at that lyrics. And out of the mouth of babes, out of the mouths of babes, you will hear the truth today. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I worship you. That you have actually come to take the burden away from us. You haven't come to burden us. You haven't come to, to load a big pile of, 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 of struggles on us. No, you've come to take it away. And you have said, my joke is light. My weight, the weight of my joke, the burden is, is light and soft. Father, thank you. Thank you that today we can come before you and ask, help us. Show us the way how to serve you. Show us the way in which we must walk. And help us to follow it every step of the way. In the wonderful name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. God will enable you. Doesn't matter who taught you. Always remember who sent you and called you. Be blessed.